Joining us now, Sean Farnham, ESPN College Basketball Insider and Color Analyst. Sean, you just watched BYU and Gonzaga play in the West Coast Conference Tournament Final. Just your initial thoughts on uh, how BYU and Gonzaga looked on the floor. Before we go there, see, it's it's that baseball talk that led me to not want to follow you anymore on Twitter. But I do appreciate the fact you retweet everything <laughs> not, I do. Yeah, I'm not all men's uh, hoops. No, I don't no, retweet it's, it's, everything it, it, you do. You pretty much do, but it's okay. <laughs> Come on. You know, the initial thoughts are this. I said before the game when we were talking, I said BYU is an NCAA tournament team. I leave this game and my thoughts have not changed one bit. I still feel like they're an NCAA tournament team. They're going to have to sweat it out now until Sunday. Uh, and, and my bigger concern right now is the health of this team. That's, that's the overall thought process that I have is, is Anson going to be okay? Is he going to be able to come back? You know, we saw Halford go down there it, with 29 seconds left to go on the clock after he dove over the top of a pile. And I'm thinking to myself, as he's doing that, I'm going, just don't get hurt. You don't want to leave here, you know, more banged up or more injured than you need to be. And, and hopefully he'll be okay. And hopefully it's not a serious injury because I think that if you take those two out of the mix, all of a sudden those weapons that, that you guys have seen all season long, the offensive firepower starts to diminish a little bit and it puts more pressure on Kyle and Tyler in particular. Does the fact that this uh, score bloats to 91-75 affect things at all? It's BYU's largest loss, and that's the last game, or is it the body of work? Well, I, I think it's the body of work, and that's where you're going to start breaking it down. Strength of schedule, 93 headed into this game. Obviously, that will improve because you're playing Gonzaga, so that number should move in the right direction for BYU. I, I think the score isn't the issue. I think the bigger issue that I have right now is the inability to stop the, the size and the interior presence that Gonzaga had. And, and certainly some of those fouls, I know Coach Rose slightly disagreed. A little bit. Um, but he also <laughs> disagreed with who the ball was deflected out of out of bounds. Um, but in those moments, that's the passion of being a coach. But as they break down this film, they're going to have to find a way to mask the lack of interior presence. They've done a great job of it over the last eight games heading into this one. You know, without the interior presence, this is the same team that went into Spokane and won. And that win, I think, is going to be the lasting memory that hopefully the tournament selection committee has. But moving forward into the NCAA tournament, you're going to have to deal with teams with size. And tonight, they were unable to turn over Gonzaga. Gonzaga did an outstanding job against the pressure defense. Only one steal in this game for BYU. And you guys know how important that is to the offense to get out in the open floor and not have to battle against the half-court setup defense, especially when they have a player like Gary Bell, who over the course of his career has done an outstanding job frustrating Tyler Haas. There's one team in this conference that Tyler Haas has failed to score 20 points against this season. Gonzaga. It's, the, it's Gonzaga, and, they've, and he's played against them three times. You've got to credit and tip your cap to Gary Bell. He's the Bruce Bowen of the WCC. Defensive there player of the year there there in the question. West Coast Conference. Sean Farnham of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation, breaking down the West Coast Conference tournament final from Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. Sean, Jeremy and I have been plugging. BYU gets to 25 wins. They're in. They got the win over Gonzaga and Spokane. Their RPI is 37 right now. It's probably going to jump up one or two spots just because they played Gonzaga. The ESPN BPI is high. So what is the case against BYU? Why would they not be included? Well, it's, it's top 50 RPI wins. Who did you beat? You know, and, and, and to no fault, by the way, of BYU and even the scheduling. You know, you, you'd anticipate Stanford off of the season that they had, who they had coming back, that they would have been a really strong or high RPI win. Uh, that, ha that hasn't been the case, obviously, as the season has progressed. They have failed to meet their expectations. So then that affects BYU. I think it's interesting to watch. We spend so much time talking about smaller conferences and bid stealers. I think the bid stealing is done from the smaller conferences. I think you got to start watching the power conferences right now. As those tournaments start to amp up a little bit, can Miami get enough wins? Can Texas A&M change the, the narrative on them right now? They only have two RPI wins over a top 50 team. And, of course, those are both against LSU. They have work to be done in Nashville where I'm going to be headed to cover the SEC tournament. But I think those teams like that in everything. Look, look at the Pac-12. Right now, besides Arizona and Utah, who would be, I mean, Oregon's going to get in by default, really. I mean, when you look at the field, they're going to get in by default. If somebody else randomly wins, if, if USC all of a sudden comes out and wins the Pac-12, that's stealing a bid from somebody else. I think that's what you need to watch right now over the next couple of days. Has Kyle Collinsworth with the triple-double and then a career-high 28 taken his game to the next level? What did you see this week? I think it's been all season long. I, mean, I don't think it's just here. I think it's all season long. I've been so impressed with him. And, and I mentioned this during the course of the broadcast. It, the resiliency 
to come back from that injury. I was here a year ago. I saw that injury, and I had great concern about what type of player he would be when he came back. He's a better player yeah, than he was. I mean, and, and in such a short period of time, what a remarkable season it's been for him. What a remarkable career it has been for Tyler Hawes. And we've talked on the, on the radio aspect of things, and I've said, you know what, long before he passed Jimmer, I said BYU fans should appreciate him every bit as much as they did Jimmer for that. Jimmer had the sizzle and pop. He could cross half court and he was in range. Tyler Hawes, his ability to work for his shot and his growth that you've seen in particular shooting off the bounce in the mid range has just blown me away over the course of his career. And, and I, I will tell you the pride that that I've sensed from that team representing the university BYU. I think that speaks a lo loud volume of as far as the, the mindset of this program, where it's at, the leadership that it has, and the future that it's going to have as well. As you guys know, some of the best players are still coming down the line for this team. I mean, you, the roster's filled out to 2020. The future is bright, yeah. Sean. The, 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 future, the future is good, and, and there's a couple <laughs> of players out there that are still trying to make decisions that are major players in the next year or so, uh, and if they come to BYU, I think you're going to see this continue to be the great rivalry. I think BYU has surpassed St. Mary's as far as the team that is the rival now of Gonzaga and partially because it's not just a passionate rivalry but because of your ability to beat Gonzaga and St. Mary's has struggled doing that as of late. Sean you've got some people to see places to be in Las Vegas before you go to the I'm SEC a, tournament. I'm a big time guy you know I've got <laughs> many leather bound books that reek of mahogany. Yes. Rich mahogany. Anchorman, Anchorman <laughs> reference to boot. There you go. Hey, hey right guys I, it, always a pleasure I, I love talking to you guys and, and of course as they go in the NCAA tournament I look forward to talking about BYU basketball as they have a potential I think the right matchup they could get to the second weekend.